So, welcome back to Into the Breach, uh, episode 17. This is going to be the last of the games that I'm going to play on this uh, stream. And uh, it's been well, 16 episodes so far. This is probably going to go for another 3 or 4. So that's quite a lot of Into the Breach. But I still want to do one more. Firstly, I promised I would, but secondly, I want to try one more squad. Now, after the previous episode, I did a really quick three island run with the Rift Walkers in order to farm a few more achievements. And I managed to unlock seven achievements pretty easily um, on easy mode, because if I'm playing to try and get the achievements, why not just play it on easy? Which means I can now afford to unlock any of the remaining squads for this final game. And I've already made up my mind which squad I want to use. It's going to be the Hazardous Max. Spectacular damage output, but rely on nanobots feeding off dead vec to stay alive. So, if I'm correct, they're the ones with the weapons that do self damage. And they will heal, as far as I understand, when they kill the vec. Which is, so far, Riftwalkers, you know, are basically about some combination of killing and pushing things around. Blitzkrieg, mostly around killing with mass lightning, but sometimes it doesn't work out. Frozen Titans obviously were not very good at killing, that's the last squad I was using. But they were very good at disabling enemies uh, by freezing them for the rest of the mission. Uh, so one that's just straight up about destroying the Vec, with the added risk of hurting yourself in the process, sounds sounds fun. I'm going to do this on hard. It is the last game. That may go very badly, but uh, we'll have to see. So what do we have? The Prime has hydraulic legs, leap to a tile, damaging self, and adjacent tiles. Hits yourself for one, and your enemy is for one, and pushes your enemies. Okay. Unstable mech has the unstable cannon. Well, I've seen that before. I picked that up in a previous episode. Does two damage to your enemy, one to yourself, and pushes you both. And the science mech has an acid reactor. Applies acid and pushes. And the passive mechs heal one damage when they deal a killing blow. So, better hope we get lots of killing blows out of these, because these are doing one damage to us. So anyway, um, let's give them different names. Uh, this is the leap forward, damaging self, and adjacent tiles. And... Shoot the enemy and hurt yourself. names don't matter very much. Um, time Traveller. Now, I have taken Prospero up to this point, I think. Three previous timelines, three final battles. Now, I know I mentioned in the previous episode that I wanted to take Prospero to four final battles for achievement. Well, it turns out that achievement is just to have three final battles, not four. So I actually got that achievement in the um, when I was doing the achievement run. So, he's got good skills, plus one move, plus one, plus two HP rather. Plus two HP probably sounds, sounds to me like a really good idea when I'm dealing with these units that hurt themselves. So I'm tempted to keep him on that front. I haven't actually unlocked very many pilots on this account. 
but none of the others I think are really going to help with uh, this team. So I think the plus two HP, I think, should probably start him in the brute mech. Because it's only got three health. Oh wait, this has only got three health. It's got five right now because of him. Yeah. Alright, let's start, start with him there. It does less damage anyway. This does two damage. So it's more likely to get kills and heal itself. It's just one damage, so it's going to take a couple more attacks. So the extra health will come in handy. Uh, what are the achievements for this squad? We have healing. Heal 10 mech health in a single battle. Uh, which I assume includes repairs rather than just by killing 10 enemies. Immortal. Finish four corporate islands without a mech being destroyed at the end of a battle. Well, I hope so. Overkill. Deal 8 damage to a unit with a single attack. Guess acid and an upgraded attack. Well, let's see what we'll get. Thanks, Prospero. So, what, what the previous little preview didn't show is what the upgrades are. So, our hydro Hydraulic Legs does one damage to everyone. We can, for one power core, we can upgrade, upgrade it to two damage to everyone, <laughs> including ourselves, or three power cores to add one damage to enemies only. Yeah, we're going to have a lot of trouble with this uh, hurting ourselves problem. Play with fire. Again, the unstable kind of received before. Three cores adds one damage to the enemy. An extra fourth core, sorry, one core, adds damage to both. Uh, Acid Restrictor has no upgrades. Nanobots, oh, increase healing to two for three cores. That might be the very first upgrade I go for, to be honest. Although it's expensive, three cores. Well. Well, which island to start at? Acid helps to destroy enemies. We've got scorpions. Beats of scarabs, uh, fireflies. All three, you well, know, scorpions and fireflies are three hit points. The scarabs and sounds are two hit points. So it makes killing them difficult. Uh, needing at least two shots. Unless we can push them into pools of acid. There's not really. We can get acid damage them reasonably easily on this island, I guess, for double damage. Plus, we've got our acid projector for target double damage. Here, much the same, except we've got armor as well. I don't really want to deal with armor when we're starting out. Because we just don't do enough damage to overcome it. Even those leapers, which are easy to kill normally. Leapers, hornet scarabs, actually that's good. Apart from the spider leader, leapers are one hit point, scarabs, hornets, and scions are all two hit points. Now the scion will give them an extra one, but we can deal with that. That's, that's a set of enemies that I think we can deal with reasonably well to begin with. Except maybe the leader, but that's the very last one to face. So we'll have, we'll have uh, upgraded a bit by the time we face the leader. Here, scorpions, fireflies, hornets. Yeah, scorpions and fireflies again, three hit points. And the leader, the blob, you need to hit that a lot. Well, not for much damage, but often. Which means lots of self damage for us. So, I think I'm going to get started uh, with RST Corporation. It looks like the best set of enemies to tackle with our starting gear. Right off the bat, I want to go to Detonation Bay, I think. To rep. But, destroy two mountains, kill at least seven enemies. Destroying the mountains is going to be oh, in the column too. It's going to be annoying because that takes one of our attacks, which means we're doing self damage in order to hit a mountain and not even um, kill an enemy and get some health back in the process. That's not quite so fun. And we've only got two mechs right now that can deal damage, so that might not be the best place to start. So we're going to take two turns hitting mountains and have to deal with the enemies with everyone else. Fortunately, the only ones with two rep is coming through Detonation Bay to here or coming through Maglev Bunkers to here. So Razor Bay, I think, is probably out of the question. Maglev Bunkers end battle with less than four mech damage. Is that really going to happen? 
I feel like that's the kind of achievement, sorry, the kind of uh, objective they put in just to frustrate this team. You know, how am I gonna... How am I gonna get there with less than four mech damage when all our attacks hurt ourselves? You know, two attacks with two of our units if we don't get the kills. Yeah, actually, let me... How does this work? Mechs heal one damage when they deal a killing blow. So if... If we don't get the kill... Like, if it's an environmental kill, th does this not help us at all? That's a good question. Do we have to get the kill? Like, here, there's seismic activity, so enemies might fall into the chasm and die. Great, enemy's dead, but if that doesn't heal us, then we're kind of screwed. We've only got three hit points here, so we can only do two attacks before dying. Unless we actually get kills off them. I don't know, I don't like I don't like the sound of this, but uh, it is leading towards this higher rep one. So And it does seem a little more achievable. Well, maybe. It seems a little easier to tackle as a first mission than destroying two mountains and killing seven enemies. So I'm gonna start here and see how it plays out. It's a new squad. I have no idea how to play with them effectively, so I guess I'm going to find out. Right off the bat, we've got a Siron giving them bonus health, a Scarab, normally two hit points, now three, and a Hornet, normally two, now three. So, we need to kill a Scion as the very first thing we do. And then tackle these two. Good news, there's a time pod. We're gonna get a power core from that if we can avoid it being destroyed. Also, good news, the Cataclysm does not want to destroy the time pod. In less good news, well, actually, here's some more good news they're targeting us and they're not targeting the buildings. So we don't have to defeat their attacks this turn if we don't want to. In slightly less good news, um, the Soldier Siren is sitting over the Cataclysm, the, the seismic activity, but it flies, so it's not going to fall in. It's a bit disappointing. Now, how do we kill the Scion here? An obvious move is to use this leap, which can. So the leap goes anywhere on the same row, so you can leap one step ahead, two steps as long as it's not in your way, and so on. So that's that's better than the normal. Um, I see that's projecting. Better than the normal ranged mechs, which can't attack adjacent. This can hit adjacent, which is useful to know. Now that's a tempting move to begin with. Do one damage to each of two enemies. But it won't kill anything, especially not the Scion. I do want to kill our Scion. Um, if I was to hit the sign with acid first then in theory I could leap here and hit it and kill it but then I'm sitting over the chasm and I'm gonna die immediately on the enemy turn so that's no good obviously I can move around so I do have some space to move around before I leap forward and have to leap forward from just here so what else how else can I manage this they're lined up perfectly right now to hit them both and if I hit either one for acid, then neither of them are going to be lined up for that, uh, to hit both at once. Which is fine, I'm kind of okay with the Scarab surviving until next turn, and probably shoot the Hornet with, uh, the unstable cannon. So that means, come here. Acid. Then come up here, do my mighty flying leap to kill it. So it died, so I got my one health back. Unfortunately, the acid that we dropped is uh, also going to fall into the castle, so nobody else is going to step on it. But never mind, that's the way it goes sometimes. Let's move up one step. 
Oh, I do. So I've got a choice. So I could shoot... I could shoot the Hornet and kill it. Or I could shoot the Scarab and kill it. And if I shoot the Scarab, I get the Time Pod. So I think the Scarab is the right one to destroy it. Or even though the Hornet's usually more of a pain, the Scarab, I think, is the one that needs to die first. Kill that Time Pod. We're still on full health, thanks to those kills. Let's see how the next turn happens. Great, an Alpha Leaper, just what I needed. Please leap, leap into one of these spaces, Alpha Leaper. Leap here, leap here. No? Nah. Well, the Scarab is uh, being helpful to us. So Alpha Leaper has three hit points. Not great. That means the only way we can kill it is to hit, uh, hit it with acid and then hit it with uh, our unstable cannon. I don't know if we can actually do that. Yeah, the only place we can actually shoot it with acid from is, well, there. Which will shoot it into the building, or here. That's not great. So I might just have to dislodge it from its current position and not get a kill. That's right, Prospero's got more health. So leaping to here or somewhere is not a terrible idea. We could probably still acid it, but we wouldn't be able to kill it. It's an unstable cannon. So good news is the Hornet, sorry, the Scarab is going to fall into the chasm before it gets this hack off, so we can ignore it completely. So I think I'm going to kill this Hornet. Oh, I forgot the unstable cannon pushes me backwards. I better remember that. Make sure I've got uh, free space behind me to use it. Alright. That leaves me free now. Oh, wait. Wait, wait, wait. Let me just check something. This leap is going to damage buildings, isn't it? It will damage buildings. So I'm going to say, that leaves me free now to uh, acid this... Leaper, which I can do. But then I can't leap here because I'll hit the building. So I have to leap over here instead. That's fine. That'll actually kill the leaper. Brilliant. Perfect. Goodbye. Well, I don't know whether environmental kills kill us health back yet, because we were already at full health, so... Question for another day, I guess. Not a leaper! Inconveniently placed. Two hornets. How do I approach this? So, obviously I can kill one of the hornets straight off the bat, the, either of them, but that's the one that's threatening building, and in fact, emergency batteries that we must protect to get our bonus power grid. Improvement. So I could acid this hornet and then leap here, uh, but if I acid it, it pushes it, so I won't be able to hit again. They're nicely lined up diagonally for a leap right now, and they won't be after I hit it with acid. So I might not have any, anything to use my acid for this turn. How does the acid projector work? Does it uh, fire on a particular tile? No, it just fires in a straight line. So this spawn is at the edge of the map. I could actually drop acid onto that spawn from here because of being at the edge of the map. But I can't drop acid onto that one because it would just overshoot. I'm thinking since I can't kill the Hornet and I will do one damage to it anyway, I might as well acid whatever enemy comes out of here next. Because the Hornet on one hit point doesn't need acid on it. Before I do that, bear in mind this guy's going to shoot and get pushed backwards, so I don't want him to push back into me. So let's, let's do that from here. Let's kill this Hornet. Get our health back. Let's do our mighty flying leap of death. Kill the Leaper and hit the Hornet. Last turn. Well, unfortunately, the Alpha was not the one that came out covered in acid, but it was a Hornet, so one hit point will kill this Hornet, one hit point will kill this Hornet. And the Alpha Scarab is really not doing anything we care about. Now, I noticed the uh, chasm has gone right across the map, so these two units are stuck on this side of the map. I think. Oh no. Oh, he's flying. 
Stefan's mech here flies so he can get across, but uh, Chloe, with the unstable cannon, is stuck on the side of the map. Which is fine. I've just got to remember that I don't uh, have a lot of options to play with. Obviously, I think the leap, the leap can get me over to the other side of the map as well. Now, here's where I would like a pull. If I could pull this one in here, leap there, and hit them both. Double damage on that will kill it. One damage on that corner will kill it. But I don't have a pull, and I can't get around the opposite side to do a push. So that's not so much fun. Secondly, Green Greasy here in the flying acid back is a little too far away to get to this side of the map and be able to use the acid to push this scarab into the, into the chasm. Unfortunate, but that's not that it's a threat. We can ignore it entirely for one. So we do need to kill these two. We don't have to kill that one. So it's probably not going to die. That's less XP for us, but it's a good reasonable trade-off for saving everything. So without really many interesting options, I think I'm just going to acid it for the heck of it. Just you know, out of spite. Nothing else. It still doesn't hit anything we care about. I'm going to kill this one with that unstable cannon. And then leap over here and kill this one with using double damage. <coughs> and that's it. We've uh, completed the first mission successfully. We did end with less than four damage because we were getting kills every turn. So, better than I was afraid of. Kind of expected us to be half dead there. And we got a time pod. Let's see what's in it. A reactor core and science glass weapon. Push all adjacent tiles. Uh, not interesting. Does no damage, but uh, the pushes itself can save buildings or push things into other things. Upgrades our shield self. Excuse <coughs> me. Shield self when it does the attack, or shield friendlies when it does the attack. It's not bad. That's science class, though. <clears throat> so it would have to be a, a green greasy to, to take it on, which means we'd move the nanobots on to one of these others. And it does, I think it needs power. Yeah. Well, we do have one reactor core right now. Wait, where do you have... Oh, we had one already powering that. We have one reactor core we can install. I'm just wondering if it might be worth... No, plus one damage each is going to be bad. It will kill enemies better. But... We get many fewer attacks. You know, we only get two attacks if we're not getting kills in a whole game. In a whole mission. And two attacks in four turns is not very good. Not very good at all. I'm more inclined to throw it here so that uh, you know we're a little safer with the unstable cannon. I don't know. Do I want to? I could, I could throw repulse in another unit, but then it takes extra power. And I just don't have the power for it. Seeing as I have it right now, and I said I might actually want to go for this upgrade sooner, the plus one heal. I can try out repulse here to power it up. Or, or maybe go for the damage upgrade on. Who needs a damage upgrade first? Hydraulic legs or the cannon? Hard to say, but since hydraulic legs can hit more enemies at once, it's probably a better deal for me to upgrade it first. Which means if I just throw this here for the time being, put this core here, really I'm planning to get this upgrade I guess, ideally. Stick it there for now, no that's no good. No that's fine. That's the passive effect. And that means we got acid or repulse here on the science mech. The repulse might not be useful, I might just sell it later on, but I can at least give it a go. And if nothing else, 
We can spend the power. We can, you know, put the passive effect back here and power it up later. So what do we got here? Shear County, defend the train. Alright, we actually have all our units right now are capable of doing pushes. So defend the train should be pretty straightforward. We may not kill things very effectively, but we should be able to keep them off the tracks. So let's give it a go. And we're starting off with two leapers. Great. Hopefully they leap uh, to diagonally adjacent positions so I can leap in front of them, but, you know, who knows. And... Oh, and of course I've got extra health right now, thanks to the Scion there. So we want to kill that Scion pretty quickly. Let's see what happens. Hello. Hello. Well, here's some terrible news. Uh, quite terrible news, in fact. We cannot... We're not flying here. So although I can go in the water, I won't be able to shoot from the water. So I can't actually... This building's in the way, the water's in the way. I can't actually get anywhere to attack the soldier Scion with. So it is not going to die this turn. That's really not the news that that's after. <clears throat> Which means I'm going to have to deal with these two leapers. Good news, I can actually fly over here. I can repulse or I can acid it. Acid it means it's going to take double damage. Let's push that there. Now, of course, that's a problem for the train right now, but if instead our heroic um, Prospero leaps forward, kills two, one's going to fall in the water, the other's going to die thanks to the acid damage. Still have no way of killing the Scion this turn. <clears throat> Excuse me, shake my throat. So, the unstable cannon is really not going to be of much value just yet. Hopefully, we can deal with it next turn. I'm trying to save this turn. Hornet and Alpha Hornet. I don't like Alphas. Well, good news and bad news again. They're both lined up for a leap right now, but unfortunately the Alpha Hornet has a ton of health and we kind of would like to ask it. Um, I'm also very inclined not to leap into Ask myself because I would take two damage from doing so and be acid for the rest of the mission unless I repair. So obviously we're going to get out of the way here, we're, we're in the way, but what can I do? But this enemy must be uh, dealt with, otherwise it'll kill three buildings for us, that's no good at all. This enemy's gonna kill the train, that's also no good. And I want the Scion dead if I possibly can. Really, oh. Well, I don't really have a way of killing the Scion this turn, once more. Because... All my attacks against it... Like, I could leap. But then I'm hitting the train at the same time as I'm hitting it. It's not killing it anyway. Right? Uh, I can shoot it with the other stable cannon, but then I'm also pushing myself back into the train. If I come from this side, I can leap here, hit it for one, push it into the building, and it dies. Great, but there's a building being hit. Or, same deal, a stable cannon definitely kills it for two, and pushes it into a building. I'm pushing it back over a spawn. Eh. I know these aren't looking good. How do I deal... I could deal with him with a leap here, maybe, and risk building damage. You know, our grid defense is our grid defense is normal, but our power grid is up high, so it might be okay. It might, but I do need to deal with these two, and I think the Alpha Hornet really needs to get some acid on it. Unfortunately, the only way to get acid on the Alpha Hornet is to sit here and shoot it with acid, and that gets acid all over me as well. I can't actually get round far enough to hit it from the other side. I can't leap over here to push into the acid without hitting a building. And then I also have this one to deal with. So they both need to be pushed somehow without hitting the train. 
The only way I know how to push this one... Again, we can't do a leap because we'll hit the train. So, I can move Unstable Cannon up here and shoot that horn. We're going to push backwards onto the sand. That's no problem at all. We will get a kill, so we're going to be one damage down. Then... This one, this is a green greasy here, doesn't have a weapon that does self damage. So it could actually sit on the acid here. In fact, I can do that move and not, and not be covered in acid, so it's safe to do the experiment just now. I could acid them and push them out of the way. That sets them up for next turn better. And if this one has already been pushed here and had two damage taken, its attack is dealt with. It dies when the scion dies. Alternatively, I could just move here with my science mech and use my repulse to push them both out of the way. Doing no damage to either of them. That means we're left with both of those still active. And the scion, and three new enemies next turn, which I don't think... I don't think is uh, something I'm going to have really the capacity to deal with. So, let's... Let's do what we can. Let's get that one almost dead. Let's get ourselves covered in acid, and the alpha covered in acid. At least we have a bit of chance of killing next turn. And we're not taking self damage, so it gets doubled. So what about Prospero? I'm still tempted to, you know, do this sleep. Risk a building. Pray for resistance. Kill the Scion. That will kill the Hornet. Prospero will get his health back for whatever, you know, good or bad it does. I'm gonna do it. The Scion, the Scion is a problem for us. And two turns in, we haven't been able to kill it yet. We're gonna have three new enemies spawning. I'd rather have the Scion and the Hornet out of the way, so... I'm really sorry, guys. But this uh, giant floating blobby green and blue monster is gonna crash into your building. I hope your building can survive it. But, nope, 212 people dead. We are monsters. But, two other monsters are also dead. Alright, let's see what this next turn brings. Train is still safe. We have another Hornet, two more Hornets, and a Scarab. Alright, great news. Uh, mostly great. Nothing's attacking buildings. And green greasy, you can easily get out of the way. The Alpha Horn is dead at 4 hit points because the Scion is dead. So if we can get into position to shoot it. Huh. Huh. Yeah, we can get, we can get this one out of the way somewhere. Then we can get into a position to shoot it here and uh, kill kill it and the Hornet. Unfortunately, that will kill us. We will take two damage. One from the collision, one from our unstable cannon. It's really not great. Really not great. Now, we'd get a kill, so we'd get one hit point back. But I don't know how that works. If we get one hit point back, do we not die this turn? Or do we die and then come back with one hit point with an AI control unit? I, this is a, probably a question that I'm going to need to know the answer to. It will be a big better boom for damage. Um, but, so I really get, I'm going to need to know how this health restoration works when a mech gets destroyed, I think. Considering how much self damage we're probably going to be taking throughout the, the game, especially once we get the damage upgrades on our weapons, the answer to this question is probably going to be the difference, make a difference in some missions. So, I still have my reset, I've not used my reset at all this mission. There's only one way to find out, as what Gordon's saying, so I'm going to find out. I'm going to take this, I'm going to see what happens. If it's bad, I'm going to reset the turn and find a different way to resolve this turn, but at least I'll know the answer. So, 
The answer is... Chloe is still alive. Now, this is still bad, of course. Chloe's gonna die to that attack. Um, so this is probably still not the solution we want just now. But the answer is the healing... The, rep the one repair unit point... Sorry, the one repair point that we've got from killing the enemy does come in... Does kick in just before we die. So that's really good to know. I'm gonna reset anyway. Because otherwise Chloe will die. So I really don't think this is a solution for this turn, but that's... It's good to know that the repair kicks in before pilot death. So what am I gonna do then? I think... Well this one needs to die, it's just blocking the way. This one just needs to be moved out of the way. That one we don't really care much about. So I'm thinking, probably just have Chloe, well, she shoot from here actually, Chloe just shoot from here to kill the Hornet. We're not getting enough kills this way for XP, but um, hold my beer, we'll be able to leap into this spot and push, push both of these out of the way. Won't kill them, but we'll save the train, and that's what we're trying to do right now. We'll get XP as missions progress. If we're not getting XP fast enough, we can go for three or four islands instead of just two. There's no real problem with XP. And honestly, Prospero doesn't need XP for getting kills, so... There's much, much as Chloe here will get a kill, so... Get healed, get a little XP. Train is free to move on. Let's get Stefan out of the way to safety. Uh... Once again, let's just shoot acid at things, because we can, I guess. Just out of spite. Well, let's leap in here, push these out of the way, and hurt them a little bit. Nothing that we care about is going to die this turn, only a little bit of sand. So that should be a successful mission. Science in action is beautiful, says McCordens in the chat. I'm not sure there's been any science here, but... Um... Still, we succeeded in the mission. Protected all the civilians. 1288. No, we didn't protect all the civilians. We lost our building. What am I talking about? Uh, on hard, I'm, I'm used to thinking... I'm used to seeing it get, be a maximum of 1,000 that's on normal mode, but on hard it's 1,500. So yeah, we didn't quite protect all civilians. We lost one grid power. We did defend the train. So now, if I'm going for rep, which is, you know, usual tactic is to go for the missions to give two rep, two stars, because that's the easiest way to get more reactor cores, is to just spend the reputation on buying those. Alright, science in action. McCordance is clarifying his comment. Uh, the science in action is, make a theory, test a theory, and use a time machine to go back in time. Classic scientific method. I can't fault that logic, we did it, we had a theory, we tested it, and we used a time machine to go back in time. It's... I'm not sure that's what they taught us at university, how science works, but, um, maybe that's just we didn't have enough time machines, uh, in the class. So... Razor Bay has high threat. We just need to take less than three grid damage. So it's a nice pool of water to knock things into. It should be pretty easy to do, and that will get our power grid up to max and get us one. Um, excuse me, one rep. Here, destroy two mountains and kill at least seven enemies. I really think with this team, we might have difficulty achieving both those objectives. We're not even the best at killing in enemies, because we're not doing a whole lot of damage. The acid helps. There's pools of water that which might help. Uh, that one most likely. It's unlikely the enemies are going to sit up around this one. And if they're next to the pools of water, that actually means our science met with its uh, repulse ability that we've got, or the acid pushing, actually has a chance of getting some kills in, which is both good for the pilot to get some XP, and good for leaving one of our other two to go and shoot a couple of mountains. Now, unfortunately, the way these mountains are situated in this map, there's no... If, for example, there'd been two ruined, you know, damaged mountains diagonal from each other, 
we could use one leap from our uh, Prime Mech here to knock down two. And there'll be one turn to deal with both mountains and get that objective out of the way, which is, would be ideal. But it's not the situation. It's not the situation we have, unfortunately. I don't know, this looks achievable. But we didn't come back in time to fight the mech to do things that looked achievable. We came back to save the world and get as many upgrades for our mechs as we can. And we're not going to get as many upgrades as we can in Razor Bay. So we're going to come here, take on this mission, probably do badly at it. But, you know, sometimes that's the risk, the risk you got to take. Right off the bat, that's not enemies I like to see. There's a Leaper, a Scarab, and two Hornets. And the Hornets, you can't push into the water and kill. And that's already four. There's an Alpha Scarab, in fact. Four enemies off the bat. Yeah, gross. Uh, but I guess we see how it plays out. And he's not sitting next to the water either. Well, sort of good news. Two of them are targeting buildings. We've got to deal with those. Two of them are targeting us. We can ignore them if we feel like it. I don't really see a way to use these against each other. It's just... We can't push them back far enough. So, what do we do? Anders and Alpha is very tough. We probably want to throw acid on him when we get a chance. But I'm not sure that that chance will come up this turn. Because if we come up here, fire Asa, we just push him there, and he hits that building instead of this one. That's no improvement. I'm actually thinking a best starting move there is a leap to kill the Leaper. Hit the Scarab. Push it out of the way so it will attack this empty spot. And then it'll take spawn damage as well as blocking spawn trips. Seems like, you know, that's a nice set of things to have happen. That's two, the two critical problems solved with one attack, which means we then can use the second attack to shoot a mountain. And not a hornet. It's bad, because then we're not getting the repair that we need. Because we're not killing enemies. I don't see any way that uh, Chloe can actually defeat these two enemies. Or even... Well, she could shoot just the Leaper, but that's not really of much help. So, it's not it's not ideal in terms of setting us up for the next turn, but it does resolve the problems that we have right off the bat. So I'll take it. We do need to kill two mountains, and I have an open opportunity to do so without buildings taking, da taking damage, so I'm going to do that as well. Uh, I just don't like this whole self-damage thing. It's just... Unfortunately, these two aren't side by side, so I can't even push one into the other for funsies. So I might as well just acid one so that it'll die from a single hit point. Uh, there's not much else I can do. Alright, we've got one enemy dead, one mountain dead. It's not looking great so far for that for those objectives. Two pointless attacks by the hornets. Takes damage and we get another leaper. At least leapers are easy to kill. All right, and two enemies are lining up. That's promising. What's the leaper doing? The leaper's being a nuisance. So, and this horn is being a nuisance. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to get another mountain attack off this turn. You know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking that last turn. The Hornet was sitting here and attacking this spot. If I'd been able to push him this way, he would have hit the mountain for us. It's probably wishful thinking. I don't, may not have had an opportunity to do so. How do we deal with the Hornet and the Scarab both attacking these buildings? I could leap there and push the Scarab out of the way. It doesn't really help a lot. Um... I can't actually move with... I can leap out of my, this web I'm entangled in, but I can't actually move apart from that. That limits some options a bit. And I can't leap to the very spot I'm in. Which is, you know, leap straight up and back down would actually be good. It would kill both of these. But it's not going to happen. I can... And we've got to deal with this hornet as well. 
We've got three enemies to deal with this turn that are all going to hit buildings if we die. The Scarab's the most vital because it's going to kill two buildings. These only do one damage each, they're only going to hit one building. But again, they're all bad. Ideally, if Chloe does anything, it needs to be a kill because otherwise she will take damage and be on one hit point. Good news is Chloe can kill this Hornet. The bad news is I don't think any combination... Oh wait, no. No, I see what I'm going to do. I see what I'm going to do. Stefan, while well, blocking a spawn, unfortunately it wasn't really the plan, but it's the only place that Stefan can actually hit that beetle with. So Stefan hits the beetle. Now it's covered in acid and also it's attack neutralized. And this Hornet needs to die. They're both on two hit points, both covered in acid. They will both die from this, so he'll get a repair. I think that might actually mean he gets two repairs, but he doesn't have two damage, so I don't know. But two kills. Never bad. This one, Leaper is going to attack an empty pool of acid for no benefit. And Chloe can come out here and kill it on it. Hopefully, we can have some freedom next turn. We're going to have two enemies. Hopefully, we've got some freedom next turn to kill another mountain. Three, three more enemies to kill, one more mountain to destroy. We've got a Leaper and a Hornet. Alright, bad news. The Leapers hit the Acid unit. Actually, that's not terribly bad. That's actually pretty good. We don't even have to fire Acid at it. We can just go get off my lawn. But, we're still sitting on a spawn. That's fine. We will heal. We will heal from this kill, right? So we're back on two hit points, so the spawn, when we block the spawn, it won't kill us. Yeah? Yes. Great. So... Do you see what I see? I see a problem, a mountain-shaped problem. A mountain-shaped problem where, because thanks to a dust cloud that was blown up by the self-damage we took last time we fired the cannon. I can't actually get into a position to shoot another mountain here with Chloe. I could destroy a mountain by leaping onto it and risk destroying a building at the same time. Good news is Chloe can kill this Hornet, so... You know, we don't have to worry about this building here, but... Uh, alternatively, I could leap and hit that mountain for one, which only half destroy it. We'll need to hit it again next turn. And it's going to be two new enemies next turn. I'm really not sure that's... Is that going to fly? We're going to have to guarantee we can neutralize two enemies next turn. Well, all our units do have the ability to push with their attacks, at least. So we can definitely move enemies out of the way. So maybe, maybe we can take on two units next turn, and I don't have to risk destroying another building. It seems like a bad plan that I should destroy the mountain when I get the chance, but I don't want to destroy the buildings. That's our primary job here, is to save the civilians. So let's, you know, stick to the job. Let's see what enemies come up for bonus. Scarab and a Scion. Great. And the Scarab acid in itself. So that's brilliant. So we can just kill the Scarab right off the bat um, and the Scion's not doing any damage to anyone whatsoever. I really couldn't have asked for a better spawn that time. So regardless of the extra hit point from the Scion, he's just dead. Problem solved. That does mean I'm now free to do the same flying leap. Uh, actually, let's make it more dramatic. Let's do it from way back here. Same flying leap and destroy map. And we have killed exactly seven enemies, so we only just made that. Only just achieved that objective. And let's let's use our acid. Just because we can. Well, it was a close thing. But we did just succeed on the last turn with both objectives. I'll take it. And we got some power back for our crit. I'm doing, you know, recovering the power that we lost when we accidentally destroyed a building last mission. So the last mission on this island before the HQ comes under attack, I think will be Rust Beach. Well, I say I think it will be. I 
don't like that objective. Do not kill the Volatile Vec. Firstly, we need to kill enemies. Well, we can push them around, I guess, but we're limited in options to push. Um, that's the idea. You've got an enemy unit that you have to protect. It's just so counterintuitive and so frustrating. But it is the only one here that's going to give us two rep. That'll push up to seven. The corporate HQ always has two rep. So if we succeed at that one and succeed at the corporate HQ, we'll be on nine. And that'll let us buy three cores, which will be very important for getting uh, a damage upgrade, like, say, to the passive here or, or to one of the weapons. So I think I need to do it. I think I need the reactor cores. We'll try and protect the poor little volatile vec. Who's this four hit point one here? Protect him as best we can. Now, let's see how I want to do this. What's your movement? Three. I don't know where the hornet's going. I don't know where the scarab's going. You're not bothering me. They could go on either side of this block building. So I need access to this side if the hornet goes around there. Well, so far so good. Nothing we care about is under threat. And that includes Volatile Vec and it's not attacking any buildings either. So we can just ignore him this turn. So, I think we have an opportunity to get two kills in. What I'm thinking is, come up here and fire acid to push the Hornet across. Then move here, leap over here, kill the Hornet and push the Scarab. And then... No. Chloe can't actually get up here in order to shoot the Scarab. What if... What if we do the other way? If we acid the beetle, and then leap to here, kill the beetle, push the hornet, then... Oh no, Chloe can't actually get up there to shoot the hornet. And that would leave the hornet attacking the building, so that's no good. Alright, I guess we're going to have to deal with the scout, let the scout live. I don't see a way we can kill it. I guess we let it live, and we kill the hornet that we can kill. How far back can I do this leap from? Can I just really leap? I can leap all the way across the map. That's amazing. Um, Alright. So although Chloe won't be able to actually get a kill, she really should move out of the way. I don't really want to hang out near the Volatile Vet because I'll probably get webbed. And then I'll have to shoot it and damage it a lot to get free. So I'm actually going to cut this way so the next turn Chloe can come up around here. Leaper, two leapers, great. We're gonna we're gonna get webbed in anyway. Right. Oh, great. Stop it! Stop it! That's not what you're supposed to do, people. All right. So we have a scarab we need to deal with. We have a volatile vec we need to obstruct. Good news is, well, no, that's bad news actually. You can hit. Just pushing it once is not going to save the building, it's just going to push it there. Hmm. Which is less than good news. We can free ourselves from this leap attack and push him, but it's not going to not going to save him. What can we do here? We can leap to there and kill the Scarab. We can leap to here and kill the Leaper. Does that help us at all? Well, if we leap here and kill the Leaper, that frees up Green Greasy to, for example, move around here and deploy the repulse. Push the volatile back to this spot so its attack does nothing. And that leaves uh, Chloe here to somehow deal with the scarab. And again, her movement is just one more movement point would be possible, but that's just not enough 
just can't reach. So that's no good. That's no good at all. We can take one damage on the crit if we have to, but I don't want to. Yeah, Chloe would be able to kill the Leaper, but not the Scarab. That would be both Leapers dead, it would be the Volatile Vec unharmed and not doing an attack, but it would be this one hit point Scarab still getting its attack off. I could leap into the Acid really bad. I would kill the Leaper and the building. Ideally, I could leap to the exact spot I'm in to kill both, but, you know, this just does not leap straight up in the air, uh, unfortunately. So my leaping options are kill the Scarab and block a spawn, or kill a Leaper. So if I kill the Scarab with Prospero, then Green Greasy can free itself, but then the Volatile Vex sitting here, and even if she wanted to, Chloe couldn't actually get there in order to shoot it, and she wouldn't want to because that would half kill it. So I think the Scarab is going to live for another day, and we're just going to have both Leapers dead. I don't really see another way to make, of making this play out. So, go around there and push the Volatile back out of the way. Come around here, and destroy the Leaper. That attack's going to go ahead, let's hope that 15% kicks in for those citizens. Nope, 140 casualties. One good power lost. Great. Uh, it's not really how I want things to play out. We've got a scarab that, is now, that we didn't kill is now attacking us. Okay, we can ignore it. We have a hornet that is attacking a building that needs to die. We have an alpha scarab that is attacking a building that needs to die. On the, on the upside, it's only attacking a single building because the other one there was already destroyed. So it's, you know, whether it's doing three damage or one doesn't really make a difference at this point. And we're under attack by the Volatile Vec. Good news is we can deal with two of those problems at once. In more good news... Actually, let's sit there. Because I'm going to get five backwards. We don't go as far. Yeah. All good news, we can kill the Hornet and hit the Alpha Scarab for one, and that leaves us with just this Scarab, who we don't need to kill, but we can kill, and so we probably should. Both attacks neutralized. Four enemies left for next turn. And this is Sion. Great, and another horror. Alright, the horror at least is not attacking the wind. So, uh, I know I was skeptical about installing this repulse weapon that we picked up out of the time pod, but it's been it's proved it's worth on this mission alone, so I'll take it, you know. For starters, let's get the Voltal Vec out of the way of that building and get the uh, Scarab here out of the way of the other buildings. Now, we can... We cannot kill the Hornet. We can kill the Scion. So let's kill the Scion. And damage the Hornet instantly, but, you know, it doesn't do much good. But we get another kill for Chloe. And now we can kill the Hornet by leaping at it. Or, and this is much more fun, kill the Alpha Scarab by leaping at it and pushing it in the water. So that's what I'm going to do. 4 XP for the one guy who doesn't need XP. Great. Last turn. Neither of those attacks will cause us any problems. We're not too unhealthy there with our mech, so... Uh, the the self-damage is not yet a big problem. I'm kind of anticipating it will be. Oh yeah, we lost a building. 
I'm kind of anticipating the self-damage will be a problem as soon as we get those damage upgrades. So I'm not really looking forward to that. Well, we've got no new upgrades. We've got a corporate HQ under attack by a spider leader. Let's go deal with it. It's already got two... Oh, great. And another one right off the bat. Two really tough enemies that both need to get acided and badly damaged. And both, I'm sure, are going to give us grief. Well. Let's see what we can do. Two spiderlings, Alpha Hornet, Spider Leader. Wait, did the Spider Leader not do anything? I don't know where it goes. Lays two eggs. Now, what does it do? It's unaffected by smoke, it doesn't drown in water, throws out two or three spider eggs every turn. Great. Good news about the spiders is they're, they've basically got no health, so if you push them into each other or something like that, they die. So we may end up doing that. But we do need to kill the spider leader, so I am going to have to hit it with acid this turn, I think. Um, can I do that? Yes, I can get here. And shoot with acid. We're going to get two new spider links every turn, so we really have to... Oops. Oh, that's fine. We really have to be pretty good about cleaning up those um, spider links. Like this, for example. His attack is not going to hurt us. Unfortunately, he's not going to kill them either, but... We'll come here and deal four damage to the spider leader. It's going to take another one from the spawn. So, we may be able to kill it next turn. Next turn, I think we need to ask this one. Or maybe whatever comes out of here. There's four mountains. Oh, that's an ordinary one. more spiderlings. Well, good news is the spiderlings can't attack buildings. They can't get them. The other good news is, uh, although oh, uh, these spiderling eggs are a real nuisance, they don't actually appear to web the units they sit next to. Uh, normally the spiders, the ordinary spiders, their, their, their eggs will web everything that that they're, they're next to. Whereas last turn, I mean, you can't see it this time, but last turn, one of them was spat out next to an enemy and didn't web it in place. So, you know, small small benefits there. I think with a spiderling here that dies with one hit, a spider leader that dies with one hit, a hornet that dies with two, which can include push damage, I really think the only sensible starting move is this. That actually means we don't even need acid to kill this one. So let's just kill it. And we leveled up and got uh, plus three grid defense. Thanks, but, you know, not so much thanks. Alright, can I kill one of the spiderlings or anything like that? Not really. So might as well sit here, obstruct the tower a bit, and throw acid on whatever spawns out of here. I'll have to see how we get on with those spiderlings next turn. Well, the Scion's covered in acid, we got a Scarab, we've got four spiderlings. What are they going to attack? Nothing? Yeah, nothing we care about. Okay. That's good news. Um, Most of good news. I can't get at this scarab, I think, to kill this turn. It's just the spiderlings are in the way, so I'm just probably just gonna have to shoot spiderlings. I can't really. Well, I could come here and get two kills. I'd rather kill these two at once if I was doing that, but um, obviously move move them out of the way first. What about the scion? I'd like to kill the scion if I can, although. 
Oh wait, the Scion is giving health to all the Spiderlings, so it actually makes the Spiderlings harder to kill. That doesn't actually kill them. So the Scion really needs to die. So what if Prospero comes up out of the way here? Out of harm's way from the Scarab. Prepares to leap there and kill two Spiderlings. While Chloe kills... Well, actually, where do we want to be? We probably want to be back there. So let's say Chloe kills the Scion. Now this will actually kill two Spiderlings. And although Stefan has not very many weapons, one of them is also able to kill one more Spiderling. So that's good. We'll have a Scarab, a Spiderling, and two new enemies. Definitely not the worst situation to be in. We've already killed the leader, which was much quicker than I expected. So we might survive this mission. A Leaper and a Hornet. Oh, well, Leaper's not even attacking. It's good news, I guess. Right, so... I'm thinking I'm going to let the Spiderling live. You'll see why in a second. Going to supply Acid Beetle. I'm going to take a mighty leap and kill the Beetle and the Leaper together. And then kill the Horn. Spiderling gets to survive. Now, if I just used my... Repulsor there, the Spiderling would have died by crushing the mountain, but then the Beetle would have been on one hit point. Sorry, would not have had acid, and so the one damage would not have killed it. So I chose to kill the Beetle instead of the Spiderling. That's probably a bad move, because to be honest, Stefan getting a kill would have given Stefan XP, and Prospero doesn't need XP. It's not bad enough to reset, even though it's mission success, let's just take it. Ultimately save this time. Two more rep. That's our nine. That's going to get us three cores almost certainly. And the worst possible skill, but you know, it's still better than nothing. So, plus we get a bonus from the corporation for a free island. So, I'm tempted to say plus two grid power because that brings it up to four. The other options are Mercury Fist, Prime Weapon, Smash the Ground. Dealing huge damage and pushing adjacent tiles. What? What? It does four damage. Single use per battle, or you can spend cores to get a second use. It does four damage. You can upgrade it to five. I may not have another choice but to take this weapon. That's incredible. Um, and it doesn't do any self damage either, which is worth noting. Hmm. Imagine that with acid. Eight damage. It was actually an achievement for the squad to get 8 damage with one attack, so, you know. We have Silica, a special ability that requires 2 power. Mech can act twice if it does not move. Eh, no. I don't have the power to spare, right now. And... I'm... There's a couple of weapons that let you kind of fire anywhere on the map. Um, or, or that are really useful even if your positioning isn't great. But generally you need to move in order to be have your attacks be any use. So I don't know, this special ability seems less less expensive. I'm not I guess you get two attacks off on the same enemy or something if it's right in front of you. Good for killing leaders, maybe. But it's... Or you, or you use another attack to push your mech around so it gets two attacks off or something. I don't know. Uh, it's not tempting me right now. Normally my default here is the grid power because you get just a random weapon that's terrible here. But this weapon looks anything but terrible. It looks great. And I want it. That also means we're not going to have to spend a reputation on buying other weapons, so... Does mean this is a prime class weapon, we're gonna have to move those nanobots elsewhere. Good news, our Mercury Fist is already powered up. 
Uh, nanobots probably here. I'll I'll see what's in the shop before I make a decision yet where the nanobots go and where, how we distribute the power. So what is in the shop? We have repair drop, heal all player units, including disabled mechs. Single use, doesn't require any power. Now, every other game I've played before, that's not been tempting. It's like, we never take enough damage for that to be useful. But here, uh, heal all player units, including disabled mechs. Now, if the mech's disabled, does that mean the pilot stays, is survived? Or does that mean it's just repaired and AI powered down? I don't know. It's tempting. If it was on sale, I'd be very tempted to pick it up for one. But I'm not sure it's worth it for two. It's a single use. It can't be upgraded to two uses. Eh, maybe. What's on sale? Shield tank. Deploy a shield tank that can give shields to allies. It needs two power. And we'll have to spend a turn deploying it. And I have to run up next to an enemy to give them shields. Now, it's upgrades, it's plus two health for the shield tank, it doesn't really matter. Uh, although I suppose then it can block spawns and things. But, if you gave it three power, it would then be able to shoot shields at allies. So, allies means ourselves, other units we need to protect, and buildings, I think. But right now, this, this repulse um, has the ability to shield allies and buildings as well, so... On sale, but I'm not sure I need it. Passive, so I'm not receive effects. Mechs use bonuses from Vex Scion. Well, that's a change of things. If the, there's a Scion giving armor, it gives it to you as well. Huh. I don't know that's good, but it's interesting. And another passive kick up boosters. Mechs gain, mechs gain plus one move if they start their turn adjacent to each other. Uh, free. But we don't really have the slots. Right now we've got two slots used there, two slots used there, and we're gonna have two slots used here because we're gonna de be deploying this again, I think. So I think I'm just gonna pass on all of that stuff and just go with my three Reactor Girls. I'm gonna hope to get the grid power up by doing missions. I'm gonna be greedy and just go for upgrades right now. Probably a bad idea. I'll probably regret that. So, we have three cores, we're going to need one here for the nanobots, so that's a start. Two more to spend. Where can I spend two? I could spend two on that for an extra use, and then maybe later reallocate them for this plus one damage when I get an extra upgrade. That's tempting, because he's going to need those cores. Um, also tempted to get extra health. Also tempted to get shield friendly, although with low health, shield self isn't going to hurt. Shield friendly is going to give us the ability to use this and put shields on buildings and things, which is always handy. I don't know. Shield self seems kind of irrelevant, but it's not going to hurt, but it's not, not going to really game change any of the game a lot. You know what, I'm going to be, rather than race for the damage upgrade, we've done alright so far, fingers crossed. I'm actually going to throw just one in here. Yeah, why not, let's make this do 5 damage. Then we can be saving up towards some of these. Uh, I'm going to throw one in here for extra help. I think given our current patterns of behaviour, we need it. And again, maybe later we can uh, reapply that. Let's go. So. Right. I'm going to end this episode here. I will take a short tea break if you're watching on the stream. I'll be back in a few minutes. If you're watching on YouTube, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode.